when things are, you know, I know it's hard, difficult sometimes to get up and just, it's a day off and it's in Sunday morning. Uh, Linda, it's good to see you. Uh, it's good to see you walk in. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, to come early, uh, set your alarm, maybe 10 minutes, a little bit early to get up and come. Uh, listen, when I come in the back door back there, I can hear them. Uh, tearing down strongholds, believe in God for some great things. Listen, it does make a difference when we pray and believe God for incredible things. Uh, got several missing today, but I got text from most of them. They're working, they're out. It's one of those Sundays, I guess. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, a, I'm gonna call the sheriff's department, and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna round everybody up at the same time. We'd be full again. Uh, so, but anyway, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, nothing against that. People do. No condemnation. People have things to do. I get that. Amen. But, you know, it's nothing like, uh, you know, being in uh, next to each other, warring and decreeing and declaring. And let me just let me just honor the worship team this morning a little bit, because as, as in the ministry, as Dr. Sandy and I have been pretty much around the world and and uh, been in several, several hundreds and hundreds of churches, uh, sometimes churches do five songs and quit. They do too fast, three slow, offering time, another song, they quit. It's just, it's just methodical. But for, for them to hear the voice of God and begin to push a little bit harder to get in. Now, some people don't understand that, but it's okay. I want you to know that this morning they pushed in because uh, there was a push there. And after you hear today's message, you'll understand why, because it was the Holy Spirit. See, Josh thinks he's putting these songs together. <laughs> But really, the, when I start putting, or Dr. Sandy started putting a message together, yeah. uh, basically the Holy Spirit goes right over there where he is and starts putting songs in his heart. And they went through that process this morning simply because of the message today. I, I, can, I can promise you that I'm going to take you to a place that, that most messages are high and lifted up and, they, and they're all good and they're all great because it's the Word of God. The Word is always high and lifting up, right? And so, but today, I'm going to be a little bit different on you. I'm going to teach you some Bible, but also it's, this message today is meant to stir you up. Amen. It's meant to stir you up and saying, God, you know, why am I in church? Why do I go to church? And let me take just a moment to welcome the internet team uh, I mean, the internet team and the people around the world. If, if you're visiting with us through the internet, so uh, on the online or the television or some type of uh, device that you have, maybe an iPhone that you have, thank you for joining LifeGate today, the family of God here, a place where you can grow and call home. We love you and bless you. We thank you for being part of us and a family that you are wherever you are. We love and bless you and thank you for being a part of us today. And I want you to know that this message is for you, too. It's not just for those that are here today, but it's for you, too. And, and you can reach something today if you'll hang in there with us. And I've always wanted to say this on television. Don't turn that dial. Don't turn that channel. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, just uh, want you to hang in there with us a little while because today's message is called The Church and the Spiritual Shift. Where we know it or not, the body of Christ, I'm not just talking about LifeGate Church. I'm talking about the body of Christ as a whole. If you are a believer, this message is for you. I want you to understand that you do play a part in the last day's church. You do play a part. And know what? You were chosen for this day and this hour. You weren't born in 1904 so that the, but your age would be a certain age or passed on and you're already in heaven. You were born and established for a kingdom message. You were established for a person that would rule and reign on the earth and believe God for great things. And I'm going to take you to a place this morning. You're going to have to hold on. If you're a note taker, you'll probably love it. But I want you to go with me today because I believe that we're in a season of a new level. I think we're in a transitional season. We can no longer just sit down and play church. We no longer can just be a pew sitter. I, I don't believe that God has pew sitters. I believe he's called you to be anointed and appointed for a time such as this as Esther of old. I believe that God has placed an anointing. John called it this way in the, in the book of John. He said there's an unction within you. Basically that unction where the word is defined in the Greek as the anointing. And according to Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27, the anointing is the yoke destroying. It's a burden removing anointing. How many of you need some yokes removed? You know, how many of us need another? You know, sometimes, you listen, there's some people in all different levels in the body of Christ. And we, we have to understand that. 
but, but we're in a transitional place. We're in a place where, and I'm not talking about a, just a transitional place where we get a spiritual breakthrough. We're, we've been in breakthroughs, and we're constantly in a breakthrough because Isaiah 64 says that we are living under an open heaven. I know sometimes when we pray, the, we say, well, the heavens are brass. God, you're not talking. He is always talking. But please understand that it, with, with a purification process, there's always a testing. For you, listen, he needs the people to be in the right seat at the right place at the right time doing the right things, not just showing up and saying, hey, I'm here. I'm, there's a big difference between servanthood and, and pushing the kingdom to a whole nother level. Please understand that. You are anointed. You are appointed. You do have something to offer. I don't care what man may have told you years ago and said you'll never amount to much. And listen, I know that when, when parents, I talk to them all the time, lay hands on your kids. Amen. Tell them they're going to be the most successful kids in the world. Because they got you to look at. They're you to, to lead them. But I'm not talking about just a spiritual advancement. I'm talking about a seriousness in the air this morning. I know the air is heavy, but it's not heavy because there's havoc in this world. It's heavy because the Holy Spirit is staring the atmosphere. You, look, and you, you can just see what's going on around us. We have to open our eyes. We, let, you know, let, let us understanding have a, a gift of discernment to use that, that we can no longer just play church. We can no longer just come and sit. Oh, it's good to go to church. It's, and I'm, not, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about even the size of the church. I'm not even talking about our new building. I'm talking about us being people of God that will go forth, proclaim the word of God, reach somebody in Walmart, reach somebody in Target, wherever you shop, wherever you go, in Macy's or, or Fifth Avenue or whatever. Listen, it's a place for you to be shining with Jesus. I don't want to preach condemnation this morning. I want to be uplifting. But really, when we talk about God and we talk about church, how many people have we saved this year? How many people have we just pulled aside and said, do you know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? I'm not talking about condemnation. I'm talking about using what we have. I'm talking about being alive for Jesus and, and being excited about what we are and who we are in Him. It's not who we are. It's whose that we are. See, he is so excited for his last day's church. He made you and I to rule and reign in this, in this hour. But the air is heavy. Not because there's bad things happening. It's heavy because there's a shift in the airways. Please hear me this morning. Around the world, wherever you're talking, from, from Internet, for around the, we get people from South Africa. We get people listening everywhere. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is the same, Hebrews 13, 8. He's the same yesterday and today and forever. He's not changing. He's not going to change. Malachi 3 says, I am God and I change not. But I'm here to tell you, he loves change. He's always shifting. He's always doing it. We're seeing a shifting in the atmosphere right now, not just in a church. I'm talking about worldwide. I'm talking about, about, about a voice that the Holy Spirit is, is moving the airways around, changing some things. The prayers of the saints are staring the airways. Don't think for a moment that your prayers are not important to God. Don't think for a moment just because you're walking down around in a room or you're sitting in a car or you're driving to work or wherever you may be and saying, Father, here I am again. I want you to know that I love you today and, Lord, I have a need, but, Lord, I want to, to proclaim the goodness of you. I am righteous only because of the blood of the Lamb. Listen, he hears you. You are blood-bought. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 3 that we're bought with a price. We are not our own. The Holy Spirit is shifting things. Amen. There's some things going on, whether you are a one-star general, mm. whether you're a captain or a lieutenant or a two-star general. In the, I'm talking about the spiritual army of God. Whether you, you, can, may, you may be a five-star general, I don't know, but I'm telling you this, that your prayers do matter. And our prayers do go before the throne room of God, and it stares the airways and what's going on. Listen, the world is in a shift. And, and my, my heart this morning is to wake up the body of Christ and let you understand and know, listen, what you're doing is important. Oh, you say, well, the numbers are nothing. Listen, I'm not for numbers. 
I'm for the gospel, and I'm looking for Gideon 300 that would go to a city and shake somebody and say, Jesus is alive in this city. We're a watering hole. Would you come and be a part of us? Or we're going somewhere because we're not just playing this ritual role of this wonderful preaching, this wonderful, incredible word of God. We are declaring and decreeing the great things of God. We're soldiers in the body of Christ. You know, it's amazing what we look and see around the world. In Galatians 1 and 6, it says this, I marvel that you are soon shaken, removed from him that called you and grace into another gospel. Apostle Paul said, said, how can you be this person and then go somewhere else and be another person? Come on, we come to church and all of a sudden the door opens and we go, good morning, how are you? I'm good, are you? Oh, I'm blessed coming in, and I'm blessed going out. Come on, the truth is, I'm in hell all week. I've, I've done some things. I've gone through some troubles. I've gone through, but I'm overcoming by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of what's coming out of my mouth. I am not going to testify something negative. I'm going to testify something great and positive. I'm saying that He is Lord. You know what? I may, like Moses, I'm not be able to talk right, but God gave, chose me. I may not, like Gideon, I may, I'm a nobody. And God says, Gideon, you mighty man of battle. Are you? I've called you to be a mighty army of God. I want you to build. What, see, God has, has called us to do something more than just come and attend and say, here I am. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. It's great. But listen, we are in the chosen saints for the last day. We're the church of the end times. So, so listen, today I want you to be encouraged because I know that we win. Amen. I know we win. I'm not talking about fighting to get there. I'm talking about fighting from the victory we already have into the greatness of God. Turn with me to the book of Revelations. We don't do go there much because the book of Revelation is really hard to understand just for some people. You've got to bring in Ezekiel. You've got to bring in Daniel. You've got to bring in the book of Revelation. You've got to bring in all kinds of books from Nehemiah on up. But, but in, in Revelation 21, <clears throat> it's important. This is what it says. In Revelation 21... Starting in verse 1, he said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw... I'm sorry, am I 21? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And I, John saw the Holy Spirit of the city of Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold! The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and their God. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death and no more sorrow and no more crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Listen, it's not time to become complacent in our duties at church or anywhere else in the marketplace. Amen. You're more effective in the marketplace than you are in any body of, in, in, the, in the, talking about a building. Amen. Come on, be with me this morning. Hang with me because we're going somewhere. Is the fact is if we take what we know, take what we learn in the body of Christ, strength, there's strength here, there's power here. Why? Because if one can send a thousand, two can send ten thousand, but we can come and join together and be alive for, the, for the, this incredible word of God. But it's not time to come be complacent. In other words, the word complacent there is to be satisfied and not worry. You know, all my bills are paid and my car payment's paid this month. And you get to keep your house another month because you paid the bill and we got plenty of food to eat. Listen, don't be, be, be uh, challenged by the enemy thinking everything is perfect and great because you are able to meet your bills. Come on, we become complacent in where we are and we don't want to move. Things are good. Let's don't rock the boat, Pastor. Let's just, let's just keep everything level here because, because everything's good. Well, it may be good for you, but the person sitting a couple, three seats over from you may not be doing as well as you at all. Amen. See, some are battling to, to try to, to survive and to get there. Some, are, some have the victory this morning. Some are battling. Some are of, of trying to get the breakthrough that you have. And some are on the verge of quitting, the throwing in the towel and say, I can't take this anymore. I have tried the tithing thing. I have tried the church thing. I have tried to dress up. I've tried to dress down. I've tried to do everything, and it does not work. And, Pastor, I'm going to quit. I'm here to tell you that here's the word of the Lord. If you quit now, you're going to miss your biggest breakthrough. 
You can't quit. You can't quit now. See, the church must step into its new level. It's got to embrace this new shift. And here again, please understand me. I'm talking about a worldwide thing. I'm not talking about just a church. We can look and see what's going on around the world. If you know anything about politics at all, you know that this world is being shaken as never before. But it, could, it can't be business as usual. New order means you've got to have new tactics. You've got to have new, new challenges that have to have new ideas. See, we can't continue to run the race and not pass gold and not collect $200 and not collect any spoils. We can't continue to war and fight and pull down strongholds and use 2 Corinthians 10, 4. We fight it not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and powers of darkness and bring every thought into captivity to be destroyed. We can quote scripture till the sun sets, but the point is, are we going to use what we have and wake up in the morning? I'm tired of the devil throwing hand grenades into my camp. Come on, we need to throw some into his camp. Spiritual bombs I'm talking about. When he throws something, and said, well, what greater is he that's in me than he's in the world? See, some of you need to be angry at the devil because I found in the natural world when you don't, most people won't do anything, won't move very far until they get angry at something, then they start making things happen. Some of us need to rise up in the spirit of God. The Bible says, be angry but sin not. We can be angry. Listen, there's times when I have to remind God, you, you said. It's not that he doesn't know. He's just glad that I know. See, because we have a route to go. Listen, in God's kingdom, there's rewards. There's things that we can do. It says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. It's the Father's good pleasure to give us his kingdom. James 1, 17, so every good gift, Dahlia, comes from the Father above, who there's no variableness nor shadow of turning. That means he never sleeps. He never slumbers, the Bible says. He's always there ready for us to take that next level, to take that next step. Are you with me this morning? Amen. See, we must have an understanding of the biblical process before we can be spiritually successful. Did you get that? See, we have to have an understanding. If you don't understand the King James Bible, that's okay. Get you an NIV. Get your living Bible. Get a message Bible. I don't, it doesn't matter. I've had people walk in the church and say, what Bible do you use? And I said, the Word of God. <laughs> they said, if you don't use the King James, you're, talk, you're talk, taking false, you're talking false. I, I, we may go back to the King James. I, got, I preach out of the King James, but I'm not limited to the King James. You have to understand because the different translations leave certain words out and they change things. I get that. But I'm saying, talk about if the body of Christ, if somebody just received Christ as their Lord and Savior, how in the world are they supposed to be on your level? Mm. See, we need to make another trip across the Jordan. We need to pull some more saints over. How many know they all didn't cross over when the Israelites got there and going into Canaan land? Some of them stayed on the other side. They didn't see the vision. So you have to see the people that's going to go somewhere. But we've got to understand the biblical principles. To, see, to understand kingdom thinking, you've got to understand church. You can be church and not be kingdom. Please understand that. I, was, I know it's pretty deep, but it's okay. Because some people are church, they say, we're kingdom. Yeah, but you don't believe in apostles and prophets. How can you be kingdom if you're not fivefold? Well, we don't believe in apostles. They all died with so-and-so. But then how, why are they in the book of Revelation? That's the last book of the Bible. We can't take anything out, put anything in. How can we sit here and say, well, we don't believe? Well, you can, you can, you can not believe that, but to be kingdom, you've got to be for all five. Jesus was all five, and so therefore we have all five, and we should work with all five. Now, not that we're all five in, in ourselves, but you have calling and gifts and talents and abilities within you that are at least one of those five. You get that? Because that's the last day's church. See, we have to know that. See, the, the church, uh, to understand kingdom thinking, we've got to understand that the church is more than a place to come and get our fix. Amen. The church is more than a place to come and have our hurts fixed. Amen. The church is more than a place on Sunday so we can come and, and just join up with a friend and let them see the new dress Amen. or the new suit or the new tie or the new shoes. Listen, 
Come on, I'm, I'm hoping I'm waking you up this morning because this is real stuff for you to understand that you do have a place in the body of Christ. You are challenged every day by the enemy. Why aren't we challenged by the Lord? Why the Bible says he chastises us because he loves us so much and to get us to move out of our comfort zone into a place of success. See, the church is not only a place to get our hurts fixed, but it's also a place of strategy. It's a place of strength. It's a place of hope. It's a place of encouragement. It's a place of prayer. See, the Word of God is the most powerful book in the world. But what gets me is, is I can preach a word or anybody can preach a word or around the world I can see ministers around the world preaching the word of God and the person on that row will have an incredible they, glory to God. They're jumping up and they're hollering glory. They get and the person next to them going. <laughs> you know what the difference is? The difference is their focus. Where is our focus in the body of Christ? Where are we looking at? Listen, God's shifting something here, transitional shift in the whole world. I'll prove to you in just a moment what's going on. And if we don't wake up, we're going to miss what God has for the body of Christ because this is the greatest hour of the church. Look at your neighbor. Why don't you ask him something? Say, are you ready to fight for me? I'm ready to fight for you. <laughs> See, we have to know we've got to stop all this friendly fire stuff. It's just got to stop. You know, I am an apostolic pastor, and I love order, <clears throat> and I love a governmental thing, but the point being is, <clears throat> excuse me, denominationalism should not divide the body of Christ. How you worship and what you teach is two different things. The only thing different in churches that I can see in the thousands of churches I've been in is the worship. Everything else is preached from the same pulpit or a pulpit, preached from the same handbook, but we have different sides, different viewpoints, and that kind of stuff. I learned a long time ago if I went to Baptist theology, I'm going to teach Baptist theology. If I go to Methodist church, I'm going to teach Methodism. If I go to Catholic church, I'm going to be Catholicism. And so, so what happens is you become a product of who you sit under. This making sense to you, right? So, so what it has to do is we have to, to be ready, willing to fight for our neighbor. You know what? Because they're just like you. They have failed. Apostle Paul said, Romans 3, we have all failed to come short of the glory of God. We have all failed. We're, 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 we're going to miss it sometimes. I, there's nobody perfect here. But the point being, but Galatians 6, 1 says this, says, you who are spiritual, you need to restore. Go after that one. You need to restore that one has fallen. Listen, we cannot afford for anybody to go AWOL. The church is too close to incredible breakthrough. The church is, is moving into a realm that we can actually control the voting process. We could change the balloting process if we would just get our heads, heads out of the sand and begin the living Bible Christian that we have chosen to become. <laughs> it gets better. I personally believe that the latter day church will be greater than the former church. And we're going to do exploits in his name. Yeah. It's time for us to arise to a whole nother level. See, the devil keeps lying to you using religious language. I don't have time to go into it, but in Luke chapter 4, there's the, the word sent there or led. The word led there is the Greek word called ego. It means being led up, but the enemy says ego. How many know the enemy did not lead God to the pinnacle mountain? The Holy Spirit led him, but it says when, when the Holy, after the Holy Spirit led Jesus there, that the enemy led, led him to the pinnacle. No, another, another leading, another, same word, different direction. So he says this to you, and we gullibly buy this big lie. You know, the scripture says the poor we will have with us always. Not me. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says he's given us the power to get wealth. Now, now listen, because people are poor is not God's fault. The point is God may have to fix you before he fixes his finances. 
Because how can you be faithful with little with, and not be faithful with much? What happens is you get a whole lot, then if you're not faithful with a little bit, he said, well, I'm going to give you, I can't trust you anymore. Why didn't Jesus just give all five of them five talents? Well, he's fair, he's honest, he's just. You, you, yeah, but you only gave him one, you gave him two, and you gave him five. Why did you do that? What they could handle. Isn't it amazing? See, the devil uses this incredible language to us. It's okay to be spiritual where you are. You don't have to go every Sunday. You don't have to be in every intercession and group. You don't have to pray so loud. I hear you. You don't have to get too riled up there. You don't, you don't have to stomp and dance and do all that. Just be calm. See, he, he don't mind you going to church. He just doesn't want you to pray too loud and too wild and become to pull down strongholds and don't use the word of God against him. Oh, that, that uh, gets him all riled up. <laughs> Listen, but I got good news for you today. The church is not waiting for the restoration of the nation of Israel. We are ruling. Now, listen, I love Israel with everything about it and, and more. But the point is, they are our time clock. I'm looking at the second hand ticking. I watch it because they are our fruit. They, we see what's going on in Israel. We know what's going on over there. That's kind of the headquarters, if you will, of the spiritual concept of what God is doing. Israel is incredible. The Bible says when it's fruitful, beware of the last day. Listen, did you know that there's 40 major fruits that come out of Israel? It is blooming today greater than it's ever bloomed before. See, God is calling the church out of the miry clay to be up on the solid rock. We sang a song in the old church that I grew up in, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Nothing wrong with that. What a truth. What an incredible song. Listen, that is a truth. Something we can say. It's time for the church to get out of the miry clay. Come out of your closet. Listen, the LGBT can come out. We ought to be able to come out. We ought to be able to say, listen, I am a believer in Jesus Christ. I want you to know that I'm a believer in Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe that he rose from the dead. I believe that he is the Son of God, and he's not just Satan's brother. Never was, never can be. Another thing we'll never do at LifeGate is compromise the Word of God either. Listen, it's it's the prepared bride of Christ that makes herself ready that comes back. Turn with me to the book of Revelation verse 19. Just go to the last page of your Bible and turn back a couple pages and it's there. Revelation 19 and verse 1. Now what's this? It says, after these things. What things? Well, Jesus had just leaped from the balconies of heaven and he called his church to the rightful position and rightful place. And for all those who accept the atonement of Jesus Christ, this is who he's talking to. Okay? And he said, After these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. Who are these guys? Saying, What was we talking about in worship this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true. And righteous are his judgments, for he has judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Now listen to what's being said. This is the shift that's going on in the world today. This is exactly what it's talking about. I'm not talking about the seven the trumpets and the seven seals and the seven vials. I'm not talking about all that. I'm, those are already fulfilled according to this scripture. What I'm talking about now is that we need to we wake up and what's going on around us. Well, are we alert? Can we use this gift of discernment other than sitting on the back row on Sunday morning and trying to figure out what everybody did Saturday night? Come on, we need, we need to see what God is saying to us through his word of God. It's a living word of God. It's an unveiling word of God. This is why Martin Luther got an incredible revelation in Ephesians 2.8. He read that verse hundreds and hundreds of times. 
And all of a sudden he goes, wait a minute, we're not saved by works. We're saved by grace and faith. See, when we see this unveiling word of God, it says that this, this great whore, this, uh, this avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Who are those people? It's you and me. And it rose smoke up and ever and ever, and the four and the 20 elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen and Hallelujah. I don't know about you. When you get there, if you see the guy on the floor crying out, screaming, hollering, Jesus, mighty king. That's me. Because we, we get there, listen, we may not do any of that stuff. We may just, just begin to praise and join in the angels and sing. We don't know what it's going to be like. But it's not going to quit. You're not going to be just floating around on a cloud for 2,000 years and get to wave at Jesus every once in a while. That's not going to happen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped God and sat enthroned and saying, Amen, Hallelujah. And a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God with all his servants and that they fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, a voice of the great multitude. A voice of a multitude of people. That was a voice of many waters. And the voice of many thunderings saying, Hallelujah. Yeah, if you take, take a notice how many times, Hallelujah, how much celebrating is going on in heaven. Listen, people, a lot of people say, well, I don't like worship being loud. Listen, you, you, don't, you don't, may not want to go to heaven because it's going to be a noisy place up there. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of shouting going on. There's going to be a lot of worshiping going on. There's going to be a lot of people dancing around and waving and all this kind of bowing and casting crowns and, and angels. And all of a sudden, the cherubims are going to be circling around the throne crying, Holy! Holy! Every, every time they went by, they see something fresh and new. Why? The brightness of our glory. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is sitting on his throne room, and we're there celebrating and praising God Almighty. And it said, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. Now watch this. And his wife has made herself ready. Who is that? That's the church. This, he is not going to allow his church to fall and crumble and be nothing. It, that, listen, the numbers may go down because there may be people that are tested and tried. They cannot stand. They, know they can't hold on to what they got. They're not focused. They're not steady. They're not solid. They're not going to do it. They may run when things get tough. And I'm telling you that when the body of Christ gets together, there's a strength. There's power. There's numbers. You just said, and, and here he says right here, and, and, he, and he says, the lamb has made herself ready. He didn't say, it's, we, I dressed it all up. It says, they made himself ready. And to her was granted, to her, the church, was granted that she would be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he says unto me, write, John, talking about John here, said, write this, John, for the testimony in other words, what you see, I want you to be able to write this down, John, which are called into and, and rejoice, which are called into the marriage of the supper of the Lamb. If you're called to the marriage of the supper of the Lamb, that means the whole church is invited. Listen, Matthew 16, 16, Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. I will build 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 my church. Here it is right here. Really? Oh yeah. The apostle. You ever try to pick something up without your thumb? You got your prophet. They, they guide. You got your evangelist, the outreach minister. You got your pastor, which is married to the church, right? And you got your teacher, the only thing thin enough to get in your ear. So we have the fivefold ministry right here on your hand. Ephesians 4, chapter 11. He gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be pastors, some to be evangelists, for the teachers. For what? Verse 12 is incredible. For the perfecting, or one translation says, the equipping of the saints. 
Dr. Bill tells us all the time, God did not give you those people to practice on. He gave you those people to train, to equip, and challenge them so that they would get to the next level in the kingdom of God because they are all ministers right where they are. See, so listen, church, it's a testing. When a testing comes, we've got to recognize that what is the intent of the challenging? What is the intent of the testing when it does come? The Bible says for us to, when, when spirits come, that we're supposed to test them. Oh, really? You got scripture for that? Yes, I do. First John chapter 4 and verse 1. First John chapter 4, verse, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try those whether they be of God or not. Oh, really? Yeah, because it goes on to say, that we should know the voice of God and we should know the voice of the enemy and we should be able to separate the difference. Yes. The problem is in this last days that we're in, the enemy is using religious language wow. trying to think it's God. It's not God at all. It's really the de demonic force is trying to pull you in a different direction, doing something wrong so that though we fall and not become successful, but God has stamped success on you. Amen. And he said, you will overcome. By the blood of the Lamb. Not on your own merit, but on, by the blood of the Lamb. And it goes on in 1 John 4 and 4. It says, this is, we quote this a lot. Greater is he that is in me than he's in the world. That's where we get that. See, so when a spiritual shift occurs, the atmosphere begins to change. But let me, let me say this. How many know that God is in control? Amen. Regardless of what's shifting around in the world, regardless of what's happening, we've got to understand and have enough faith which is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. In other words, you can't see it, but you're going to have to know by a faith. There's another stronger word than faith called faithing in the Hebrew. But we have to, we have to know that faith, that would, it's a faith that takes us to a whole other level. It's, 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 it's when the shifting takes place, you may move, I may not. See, we have to stand. Just because I feel a, a wind blowing on me, then I'm going to widen my stance a little bit so I can be a little bit stronger. Some people say, oh, that, and, and they run and they move. And they, 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 in other words, God says, I'm not telling you to move. I'm telling you to stand having done all, right? And so, so we have to know that, that what's going on, whether, whether, it's, now what's this, whether it's a shift in the church or the body of Christ, or whether it's a national shift, biblically, a change always begins at the top management. Okay, now I'm not going to get political this morning on you, but I could. But I'm trying to tell you that our government is in the middle of a shift. Now, hear my spiritual ear this morning because I don't want people to take what I said and change it and rearrange it because a shift has begun in our government officials. Men and women that believe God, that are attorneys. we got so many attorneys up there. That, I mean, when they walk down the street, papers start falling out of their pockets or rewriting so much laws. Everybody there is an attorney. Everybody has an idea. I get that, and I appreciate that, the education and the intellectualism that you have. But listen, don't let your philosophies change what the Bible has already spoken and said. This is the way it should do. You need to be like Josiah of old. He was eight years old, ruling, reigning, and David's great, 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 great grandson standing on the courts of the temple, and they said, what are you going to do, son? All this is going on. He turns around at eight years old and says, get the scrolls. Bring the scrolls out here. Let's see what God wants to do. This is where our government needs to do. They need to go back to the Word of God. The whole America was built on the Word of God. It was stationed on the Word of God. It was fashioned after the Word of God. And now you want to rewrite everything and try to change things to make it fit your little need. See, this is where the Christians have got to rise up. This is why we've got to know the Bible because I said earlier, if you don't understand the biblical principles, you cannot have spiritual success. Right. Well, I know a couple of scriptures. Listen, it's not the how much you memorize. It's not what you know. It's your walk. It's your heart of what you can do. See, when God gets ready to shift a person, he gets ready to shift a city, he gets ready to shift a state, he gets ready to shift a nation, he finds or uses a people to change everything that God is going to do on this earth from a time he resurre resurrected from the cross, from the tomb, into the, the courts of heaven. Everything is going to be done through men and women of God on this earth. Everything. 
So he finally wants a shift to happen. He wants something to move. He'll choose somebody whether you're ready or not. You may embrace, then I'll walk the walk. If I don't know, well, I'll just be lukewarm. I'll do this, whatever. You see, this is where we've become as a nation. We've got to know that when we stand, he, see, God finds somebody that says, I need this change to happen. It's going to change whether you're ready or not. He doesn't always call the equipped, but he equips who he calls. That makes sense to you. See, so what happens is we, he'll put somebody in there, and if they're not ready for this incredible shift, they'll go the direction of their wisdom and knowledge instead of going by the direction of this wonderful Word of God. And we've got to get back to this wonderful Word of God. He doesn't always call everybody that has everything together. I can prove that biblically. Did Jesus go out to Mars Hill and pick the greatest philosophers around the world? No. He goes out to the ocean and picks a bunch of fishermen. Never had any theological training in their whole life. And it takes them and make disciples out of them. It's incredible. Amen. See, his ways are higher than our ways as the heavens are above the earth. Yes. But listen, God did not send out. Let me give you some other biblical. God did not send out the 5,000. The 5,000 was just on the hill. You know, how many remember that little story when Jesus fed them with two fish and five loaves of bread or, or something like that? And they, they, they didn't get anything. You know what they got? They got a free meal. And they got to see a miracle happen, and they got to see the disciples work in their governmental power and divide them up in groups of 50. All right. That's what they got to see. But on the disciple 12 level, they got to go on a boat ride, and they got to see a miracle that most people have never got to see. They got to see Jesus himself walking on water. And one of the guys got out of the boat and actually stepped on the water. Get back in the boat, Peter. What is your problem? You can't walk on water. And Jesus says, come. This is what I think that God is telling the church today. He's saying, church, come out on the deeper level. Come out in this transitional level. I'm putting a shift in airways for us to get to another level. We cannot do things as normal. See, at higher levels, we're going to have to have discernment to help lead us. John chapter 12, Jesus was talking to his disciples, and he tells them, and he said, then Jesus said to the disciples, he said, a little while, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you, for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goes. Let me go back political just, to, just for a moment in our governmental headship because we, got, we vote them in. If you vote them in, you can vote them out. Amen. I'm talking about a whole thing going on with the spiritual world. What? I'm not talking about denominationalism because if you believe in, you're a believer in the blood of Christ, you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, then we're all one in the body of Christ. Then it says here, while you have the light, believe in the light that you may be the children of the light. These things spoke Jesus, and he departed and did hide himself from them. While we have the light, lest darkness overtake us. I'm afraid that our government is allowing a black cloud, a dark cloud, covering the discernment, the wisdom, and knowledge. Oh, there's a couple of few standing up. I'm not talking about watching a certain channel either. I'm talking about as they buy one side over here, you got you got 45% leaning one direction, you got 45% leaning in a different direction, and they're battling for the 10% in the middle. Right, right. If I can just influence the 10%, I can control the world. Jesus. Let me give you a stat. 52% statistically, 52% of the world are believers and Christians and believers in Jesus Christ. If we are believers in Jesus Christ and we are 52%, we can put anybody we want to in Washington. But we must come together as one. But here's the problem. What happens is we vote, we know the Bible, 
and you may go to the pole and you may pull that little curtain and you may think nobody's peeking in on you, but I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is right there looking at you, what you're putting on that piece of paper. You're trying to tell me that you're going to check the mark that says, yes, I will support abortion. Yes, I will support parenthood. Yes, I will support it. I will believe in partial abortion. The Bible just says if you're a believer in that, you're anti-Christ. You cannot believe the Word of God on Sundays and vote somebody else different thinking nobody is seeing. I'm telling you that we're in a life-changing situation. We're in a transitional change in the Word of God. This world is going downhill. I mean, the, I mean it, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. I'm telling you, the world system is on a, it's going down. and The church is going up. I believe in Isaiah chapter 2. The church shall be up on the mountain. The church is not on the mountaintop right now. The drug addict and the philosopher, the uh, uh, pharmacologist might be on the mountaintop, but the church is not, but it will be. The church will be on the top of the church, by mountain of Isaiah chapter 2, and will be a light unto the city. I'm looking forward to the day that people come to the church to get alone. I think it can happen. I think it can happen. See, the church, meaning the body of Christ, keep your eye on the news. Listen, the, the news media is running the world. I know I'm preaching. And I'm on television. That's good. I hope a several thousand of you are watching. But I'm trying to tell you that we've got a biblical order in the body of Christ and the world. If we're going to choose Jesus as our Lord, then we have to not only be a believer, we got to walk what we believe. I can't believe something and vote differently. Look, if, if I look at the candidates, and I don't care if they're five different colors. The point being, are you, are you believing in abortion? I'm not voting for you. He may be the best person in the world. He has great standing. I don't, I'm not going to vote for you. Why? Because you believe in killing babies. Statistics says 30% of this world is dead because of abortion. Out of the 30%, how many of them were apostles? How many of them were prophets that could give direction and order for the country this hour? How many of us can just sit back and see? Just you know, you know, We get an email or a Facebook or something. And we get, oh, well, I'm not going to like Listen, what you like is you just put yourself in that. So we, as a church... I hope you're hearing me this, but the, the message is designed to make you arise, to get you on fire again, to reach out and save souls. A spiritual shift. This thing's been going on for years. Except it's been behind the closed walls for a lot. For a long, long time. And Cyrus had to come and rip them all apart. Some of you will get that on the way home. What I'm saying is we've got to arise to our calling. God has been trying to restore this church for hundreds and hundreds of years. Ever since the silent years. 400 years. Isn't it amazing that for 400 years God did not talk? 400 years God did not talk. Didn't say anything to the Jewish country. But in 1500s, God chose this guy, Martin Luther, gave him a revelation, Ephesians 2.8. You know, there wouldn't be any Lutheran churches today if it wasn't for Martin Luther. In the 1800s, the, the holiness movement came in. And God began to use these, these, these different revelations to fill things back into the church. Listen, we, for the first 200 years in church history, there was no, no, no teachers, evangelists, and, and uh, uh, pastors. They were only apostles and prophets. We go into 400 years of silent years. We come out with pastors, teachers, evangelists, but lost the apostles and prophets. And since that time, God's trying to restore everything back into the church. So in the 1500s, God begins to restore the, the, the sanctification of learning who God is again and getting people saved and the salvation message was preached. 1800s, the holiness movement came back into church and people began to lay hands on the sick and they went to Hebrews 6 and they began to lay hands on the sick and they began to recover. And not that we had anything to give, but the Bible said, just lay hands on them. And people ask me all the time, if you lay hands on them, what if they don't get healed? What if they do? The point is you have nothing to give. Just do scriptural. Do, do what it says. It's God's problem. Yes, right. That's right. Lord, I'm just going to be obedient. Obedient is greater than sacrifice. Yes. 
So in 1800s, the holiness movement came in, and God began, began to restore the dance back into the church and the clapping and the praise. And, and then in 1900, the, 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 the Pentecostal movement came in. And then, you know, in the 1950s, there was a guy named Billy Graham started teaching and filling stadiums and, and trying to do stuff. And he was the teacher. The teacher movement began. And Billy Graham is saying, you in the audience, come on, you in the upper balconies, come on down. The buses will wait. And, you know, they, and thousands would come out of the stand and stand around the altar. And he activated them into the gift of life. He said, repeat after me. I, I, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the blood of the Lamb. I receive him as my Lord. And I renounce all other gods but him. Yeah, I am saved. And all even though, even though they were Baptists, they go, yes! Which fulfills the scriptures of Timothy told Paul, lift up holy hands without doubt and without wrath. So, so and then in the 60s, a, a guy named Bill Hammond, God began to take him off his horse. Really, literally. He would ride to Brush Arbor meetings. Telling everybody he's a prophet of God. People come, they were laughing at him and pointing fingers at him. And there wouldn't be a prophetic movement today. It was launched in 1988, fulfilled the commission, 1988, and Bishop is the forerunner of the whole thing. Yes. He's gonna be here on November the 18th. That's my father and the Lord. Yes. And then in 1992, the apostolic movement came flowing in. And the reason we know it flowed in and flowed in all over the world at one time because there's a symposium in California four years later, I think, or three years later, and, it, and they, we round table and apostles and prophets began to get together and teachers and evangelists, and they had this round table, and they said, you know what, on uh, October this date in, in, in 1992, man, God gets outpouring, and I was, we were there at, at CI, Christian International, thousands of people there. We couldn't even get to the altar. People were laying in the floor crying, and then Bishop was laying on the altar, and he was rolling over, and he was crying and he and they thought he had a heart attack and it was a move of God the Holy Spirit hit that place and birthing the apostolic movement Amen. three years later we find out in California that everybody's been around and this guy in in, in South Africa said what 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 date was that well wait, wait, wait a minute that was October oh, oh on what time about was about seven o'clock out there oh my god but same thing happened in California then a guy rises up from Asia said women it, it happened in Europe it happened in Asia it happened all over the world at one time God's not going to do something in this church and not do it in that church. God is not. He only has one church. It's called the blood-bought church. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. See, understanding Bible is so important. But each move from the Pentecostal, Protestant, holiness movement, the, the faith movement, the, all, all the stuff that's going on, God restored things back into the church to get it where he needs it to get for today. And we see all this eruption going on right in the headquarters of the world. Here again, God is using this thing. What did we just read about the great whore? Sexualism. What are we seeing on the news today? Are we hearing with spiritual ears and what's going on around us in the capital? See, we can't be complacent anymore. Let me close with this. Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. This is us. It says, and it shall come to pass afterwards. After what? After Acts 2. <laughs> okay. Please understand the church didn't start in Matthew, Mark, or Luke, or John. Fulfillment, Yes. But the church was birthed in the book of Acts. That's why there's a the end in the book of Matthew, the end at the book of Mark, the end at the book of John, the end at the book of Luke. But there is no the end in the book of Acts. Why? Because we are the ongoing church of the book of Acts. If you want to know what the last day's church looks like, we need to look around. This is as good as it gets. You were chosen and appointed and anointed for a time such as this. And he says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Not just these people over here, not just those over there. And your sons and daughters. What are we doing with the younger generation? Well, what are we going after? I'm talking about even Josh and them's age, the younger generation. What are they going after? 
See, somebody's got to keep this fulfillment, this shift, this thing's going. This we got to look beyond, further than our household. We got to look further than our local church. We got to look further than our job in a workplace in a marketplace. We got to look. We got to think outside the box. This is. I mean, we're in a we're in a demand right now. The church people are looking there, watching you. They're looking at everything you do. What are they doing? Why do they do that? Why is she doing that? Why does she say those things? Listen, it's it's pretty incredible. But he says here that I pour my spirit out upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. What he's saying he said your sons and daughters are going to have the word of the lord in due season and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men will see visions and also all up on the servants and up on the handmaidens in those days will i pour out my spirit watch this now and i will show <laughs> wonders in the heavens and in earth this is why we pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Why? Because whatever's going on in heaven has got to happen on earth. Amen. One day it'll be that. Yes. But we had pray it. So the wonders of heaven in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun will be turned in the darkness and the moon in the blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass. Let me read that again. This not might happen. It's going to happen. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon my name of the Lord shall be delivered. For the Mount Zion, Zion basically means God's dwelling place. And in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. And the Lord has said, and in a remnant, whom the Lord shall call. We must be about the Father's business. Today's point is to get the church to arise. Listen, there are souls within blocks of this church who are going to die and go to hell because they've never heard the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of living God. There's vacant chairs this morning in every church. They need to be filled. Now, where they stay with the church, is their, it's their own decision. I'm talking about, I'm talking about getting them there. To understand the, the blessings of God and what can happen. Some have tried church. Never seems to fit. And the reason it didn't fit because they had a bunch of religious people doing religious things. Religiosity is what crucified our Lord. We need to be real. We need to be fair. We need to listen instead of doing all the talking. See, sometimes people come to church, you don't listen. They leave, they never come again. Why? Because they didn't get, you, didn't, you didn't let them tell their story. They're trying to tell you in a good way, not everything is not okay, that I need help. I need some prayer. I need somebody to be my friend. Statistics tell us that most people who visit a church don't come to hear the great message. They come to be loved on. They come to be recognized. The fact is that have somebody give them a word of encouragement saying, you know what, you can make, you're going to make it. Everything's going to be okay. Don't you know you're not alone. We're here with you. And some people say, well, you know, Pastor, there's just too much control in the churches. I can tell you this, there's too much control everywhere. It's not going to get easier, it's going to get harder. But we're going to do our best as leaders of the body of Christ to keep it out of the churches. I cannot stand cliques. Because what happens is everybody gets in a clique and they all get in a huddle. And they're in a big circle and everybody walks in all they see is butts. Come on, think about it. Yeah, I said that. We have to understand that in the body of Christ... There's things that we have to do. We need, instead of being huddled up, we need to huddle, but we need to turn back to back and guard each other. If a war comes, I'm going to fight you all. That's covenant. How did covenant get in this? The covenant got in this because when the patriarchs of old were staying, they'd slay it in Abrahamic days. It would slay an animal, and then the, the, the blood would, fl the animal would fly open, and the, the bullock or the ram or the goat, then it would open up, and the two patriarchs, they would stand back to back. 
in his blood, and they both of them in the blood, and they would take, one would walk this away and make, go to the left, and the other one would walk out the other side, and it would go to the right. It would form a figure eight, and they would come back, and they would stand in the blood again face to face, and this is the covenant they would make. There's nine steps of covenant. I don't have time to teach them all or talk to them all, but I'm telling you, the first thing they would do, they would look at each other, and they'd take their coat off, and they'd give their coat or a cloak back in those days, meaning I'm going to cover you. You cover me, I'm going to cover you. Next thing they do is take off their belt. People say, well, you, you, they take off their belt. Why would they take off their belt? Because the belt is what helped their weapon, their sword. In other words, what they're saying, I'm going to give you my sword. I'm going to take off my belt. I'm going to give you my sword. Therefore, whatever you challenge you, they're going to challenge me. I'm not going to kill you or attack you with my own sword. It's called friendly fire. I'm not going to do that to you. Then they'd take the sword and they'd cut their hand. Then they'd reach down and take dung or dirt and put it in their hand and they'd make this. You'd say, well, don't do that. You get an infection. Exactly. That's what they did it for. Why? Because they wanted that scar to be formed in their hand. Why? Because later in the years when they got older and they're walking down the, patri the, oh, the back alleys of Jerusalem, wherever they may be, and some intruder see them in the alley, they would hold up their hands. Now, this is translated in the New Testament with Jesus, but the patriarchs, they would hold up their hands and they're saying... See my scar. That means I'm in covenant with somebody. You touch me and they'll hunt you down. And there's several other steps I could talk about. But I'm talking about our world today. We have got to know that we are believers of Jesus Christ. I want to read this to you. Here's a story about a billionaire. BNSF. Burlington Northern Santa Fe. Warren Buffett is his name. Worth $67.7 billion. Here's the words of wisdom for him. Many people are controlled by others and what they have to say. If this be a fact, then anyone can be controlled by others. However, when confronted by others, we tend to use our phrase which says, for every action, there's a reaction. But if silence be our weapon while we're being tested, our intelligence is valued not by entering into a downward declining act of disruption. Therefore, what others may say around me does not control me, but only enhances my destiny and pushes me forward. Because, see, when somebody jumps into your face and confronts you as a believer, we are quick to jump right back in there. And what he's saying is, let wisdom, let intelligence be your guide. And it will push you to a whole nother level. When you join in with the argumentation of the enemy, what happens is you may be on the right track for God, but you know, he changes that direction using a spiritual language and changing you, this is where discernment's got to come into play. Would you stand with me this morning? Let me ask you this morning, what is holding you back? What is holding you back from sharing what's in your heart? And while you're standing, let me say goodbye to our internet family. We bless you and love you and thank you for watching today. And we'll see you next Sunday. But for us here today, what's holding us back from doing what we need to do for the Word of God? What's holding us from proclaiming that wonderful name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God? What's holding us back from saying, do you know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? Did you know Jesus? And he said, No, but my brother's a Christian. And I said, You know what? Your brother's a wise man. And you need to become wise also.
his English was so broken, I wasn't able to really talk and carry on a conversation with him. I looked around to see if anybody was there that would come and tr translate for me. There was nobody there. We were all outside working around the back. And Thank you so much for joining us today on this Facebook Live video. Most Sundays we have altar call, which is personal. And for that reason, we do not air this part of the service. We hope you understand and that you enjoyed the message. If you have any questions or concerns or if you have any revelation from the word today and you'd like to share it or any testimonies for that matter as well, please reach us as on social media and those links will be following. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.